Welcome to the Beyond the Basics guide for the 7D Mark II. This is a great camera that will capture amazing images as well as HD video. We hope you'll enjoy learning more about it with this instructional guide. This guide is meant to be a study tool to be used in connection with and not a replacement of your camera's owner's manual. Please note that this guide does not cover many of the more basic features and functions of the 7D Mark II as those topics are discussed at length in our original guide. Rather, this guide will help you move forward with your knowledge of your camera to help you take the best pictures possible. Let's get started. Your 7D Mark II has many buttons, dials, and features that are fully customizable. By customizing the functions of your camera, you'll be able to access your most frequently used settings and make your camera even more intuitive. Making changes to the functions of the customizable buttons can be done in two ways. First, you can make changes using the camera's menu system under the third custom function settings menu. Here, select custom controls. Now, you can use the multi-controller to select different options to make adjustments to. The other way to access the custom controls is in the Quick Control screen. Press the Quick Control button and select the Custom Controls icon. First, there is the Shutter button, which can be customized with one of three different functions. The first and default option is Metering and AF Start. When this option is selected, pressing the shutter button halfway will activate the exposure meter and the autofocus. The next option, metering start, will allow you to activate only the exposure meter when the shutter button is pressed halfway. The last option is AE lock. When this option is selected, pressing and holding the shutter button halfway will lock the exposure setting, which will allow you to recompose the shot and keep the desired exposure setting. The next customizable button is the AF on button with several different options. First, there is the metering and AF start option. When this option is selected, pressing the AF on button will activate the exposure meter and autofocus. The next option for the AF on button is AE lock. When AE lock is selected, you can press the AF on button to lock the exposure. Next, there is AF stop which will allow you to stop the camera from auto-focusing while the AF on button is held down. AF stop is convenient when you'd like to lock the focus while the camera is using the AI servo focus mode. Next, there is FE lock, which will allow you to press the AF on button to lock the flash exposure setting. One shot AI servo is next. When this option is selected, you can press and hold the AF on button to switch the focus mode to AI servo when one shot is selected. Next, there is register recall shooting function, which will allow you to register a specific shooting function to be recalled when the AF on button is held down. The next option is AE lock hold. AE lock hold will allow you to lock the exposure and the exposure will remain locked until the button is pressed again. Next, there is AE Lock AF Stop. With AE Lock AF Stop, the autofocus will stop and the exposure will be locked while the button is pressed. The last option for customizing the AF On button is Off, which will disable the button's function in the camera's shooting modes. The next button that can be customized in the Custom Controls menu is the AE Lock button. The first and default option for this button is AE Lock, which will allow you to press the button to lock the exposure settings. After the picture is taken, the AE Lock will be released. The next options are Metering and AF Start, AF Stop, FE Lock, One Shot AI Servo, Register Recall Shooting Function, AE Lock Hold, and AE Lock AF Stop. Each of these options function in the same way that they do for the other customizable buttons. The next button that can be customized is the Depth of Field Preview button, which has 12 different options. 
The first and default option is the depth of field preview, which will allow you to check the depth of field for a picture before it's taken. The next option is AF stop, which will allow you to press the button to stop the camera from autofocusing. Again, this is useful if you want to lock focus in the camera's AI servo focus mode. The AE lock option will allow you to press the depth of field preview button to lock the exposure settings. The next option, One Shot AI Servo, will allow you to press and hold the depth of field preview button to temporarily switch between the One Shot and AI Servo focus modes. This is useful for times when you're photographing a subject that frequently stops and starts moving. The next option, IS Start, will allow you to press the depth of field preview button to activate the image stabilization that is available on certain lenses. Note that this function will work only if the stabilizer switch on the lens barrel is set to on. The next option is switch to registered AF function. With this option, you can press the depth of field preview button to instantly switch to the AF function that you have registered. To view the options that you can register, press the info button. Now you can use the multi-controller to select one or multiple options for the camera to instantly switch to when the depth of field preview button is pressed. Settings with a check mark will be registered and recalled when the depth of field preview button is pressed. To modify any of the settings, use the multi-controller to select it, then rotate the main dial or use the multi-controller to make the desired adjustments. The next option for customizing the depth of field preview button is One Touch Image Quality Setting. When selected, One Touch Image Quality Setting will allow you to press the depth of field preview button to instantly switch the image quality to the setting that you have selected. After the shot is taken, the image quality setting will switch back to the previous image quality setting. To select the image quality setting for this function, simply press the info button and make your selection. The next option, One Touch Image Quality Hold, functions in the same way as One Touch Image Quality, except that with the Hold option, the camera will continue to use the selected image quality setting until the depth of field preview button is pressed again. The next option for the depth of field preview button is FE Lock, which allows you to press the button to fire a pre-flash and lock the flash exposure setting. The next option is Switch to Registered AF Point, which will allow you to instantly switch to a registered AF point when the button is pressed. You can further customize this option by pressing the Info button. Here you can choose to have the camera switch the AF point only while the Depth of Field Preview button is held down, or you can choose to have it switch each time the button is pressed. The next option for customizing the depth of field preview button is AE lock hold. When selected, AE lock hold will lock the exposure setting when the button is pressed, and the exposure setting will remain locked until the button is pressed again. The final option for customizing the depth of field preview button is unlock while button is pressed, which will allow you to temporarily disable the multi-function lock while the depth of field preview button is held down. The next button that can be customized is the Lens AF Stop button, which is available on certain Canon lenses. For this button, there are eight different options. The first and default option is AF Stop, which will allow you to stop the camera from autofocusing. The next option is Metering and AF Start, which will allow you to press the button to activate the exposure meter and autofocus. Next, there is AE Lock, which will allow you to press the button to lock the exposure setting. Next, there is One Shot AI Servo, which will allow you to toggle between the camera's One Shot and AI Servo focus modes. The next option is IS Start, which will allow you to activate the image stabilization feature of the lens when the button is pressed. Next, there is Switch to Registered AF function which will allow you to quickly switch to a pre-registered autofocus function. Next, there is AE Lock Hold, which will lock the exposure and the exposure will remain locked until the button is pressed again. The final option for customizing the Lens AF Stop button is Switch to Registered AF Point, 
which will simply allow you to quickly select a pre-registered AF point. The next button on the 7D Mark II that can be customized is the multi-function button with six options. The first option is FE lock, which will allow you to lock the flash exposure when an optional flash unit is used. Next, there is AE lock, which will allow you to press the button to lock the exposure setting. The next two options are one touch image quality setting and one touch image quality setting hold. With both of these options, you can press the info button to select an image quality setting that you'd like the camera to switch to when the multi-function button is pressed. The one touch image quality setting option will take just one photo with the different image quality setting when the multi-function button is pressed, while the hold option will allow you to continue taking pictures with the different setting until you press the multi-function button a second time. The next option, AE Lock Hold, will allow you to lock the exposure setting and keep it locked until the button is pressed a second time. The final option to customize the multi-function button is Cycle, which will allow you to press the button repeatedly to access the flash compensation settings, the ISO, the drive mode, the autofocus mode and white balance settings, and the metering mode. The next button that can be customized is the set button. The first and default option for the set button is off, which means that the button is disabled in the camera shooting modes. The next option is image quality. When selected, image quality will allow you to press the set button to instantly access the camera's image quality settings. The next option is picture style, which will allow you to press the set button to quickly access the picture style settings. The next option, Menu Display, will bring up the menu system when the set button is pressed. The next option for customizing the set button is Image Replay, which will allow you to press the set button to display the most recently captured image. Next, there is Magnify Reduce, which will allow you to press the set button and rotate the main dial to play back and magnify or reduce the most recently captured image. The next option is Set ISO Speed. When this option is selected, you can press and hold the set button while rotating the main dial to set the ISO speed. The next option is exposure compensation, which will allow you to press and hold the set button while rotating the main dial to adjust the exposure compensation setting. The final option is flash function settings, which will allow you to press the set button to quickly access the flash settings for the built-in or external flash unit. The next control that can be customized on the 7D Mark II is the main dial. By default, the main dial is used to set the camera's shutter speed in the manual shooting mode. With this option, you can choose to switch the function of the main dial to control the aperture setting in manual mode, or you can disable the function of the main dial. The next control that can be customized is the quick control dial. The first and default option for the quick control dial is aperture setting in manual mode. The next option, shutter speed setting in manual mode, will allow you to use the quick control dial to set the shutter speed in manual mode. Next, there is direct AF point selection, which will allow you to rotate the quick control dial to quickly select the autofocus point. Next, there is set ISO speed during meter, which will allow you to rotate the quick control dial during exposure metering to select the ISO setting. The next option is direct AF point selection vertical, which will allow you to rotate the quick control dial while shooting to scroll top to bottom through a column of AF points. The final option is off, which will simply disable the function of the quick control dial. The next control that can be customized in the custom controls is the multi-controller. The first and default option is off, which will disable the multi-controller's function in the shooting modes. The other option for the multi-controller is AF point direct selection, which will allow you to select the camera's AF point manually without first pressing the AF point selection button.
The last control that can be customized in the custom controls is the AF area selection lever. The first and default option is off, which will disable the lever's function in the shooting modes. The next option is AF point direct selection, which will allow you to select the camera's AF point manually without first pressing the AF point selection button. Next, there is AE lock, which will allow you to rotate the lever to lock the exposure setting. Next, there is AE lock hold, which will allow you to rotate the lever to lock the exposure, and the exposure will remain locked until the lever is rotated a second time. The next option will allow you to rotate the lever to quickly switch the focus point from the selected point to either the center or a pre-registered AF point. The next option is ISO, which will allow you to hold the lever down and rotate the main dial to select an ISO setting. The final option is exposure compensation, which will allow you to hold the lever down and rotate the main dial to set the exposure compensation. On the 7D Mark II, you can also customize the function of the Info and Rating button. To do this, we'll need to enter the camera's menu system and navigate to the third setup menu. First, we'll look at the options for the Info button. With this option, you can choose what displays are shown each time the Info button is pressed. You can select or deselect camera settings, electronic level, and shooting functions by pressing Set. When you've made your selections, Highlight OK and press Set again. The other button that can be customized in the Setup menu is the Rating button. Here, you can choose to have the Rating button be used for rating images or for protecting images. Bracketing is a technique that allows photographers to take several versions of the same photo but with different settings. When exposure is bracketed using three images, one of the photos will be properly exposed, one will be slightly overexposed, and one will be slightly underexposed. Then you'll have the ability to choose the best image of the three or use photo editing software to combine the three shots, giving the image a broad range of highlights and shadows that are all properly exposed. This technique is often called HDR, or High Dynamic Range. Professional photographers have used bracketing since the days of film to ensure good exposure on important shots. With the 7D Mark II, bracketing is available for exposure and white balance. Let's first look at how to configure the camera for exposure bracketing. The first thing that you'll need to do is set the drive mode. When you're using a continuous drive mode, you'll press and hold the shutter button to record the number of frames that you'd like. For the other drive modes, one shot will be taken each time the shutter button is pressed. To choose the drive mode using the quick control screen, simply press the quick control button and use the multi-controller to navigate to the drive mode setting. Press set to view the options. Here, you can rotate the quick control dial to make your selection. The next step to configure the camera for exposure bracketing is to select what type of bracketing you'd like from the menu system. To do this, navigate to the second shooting menu and select Exposure Compensation AEB, or Auto Exposure Bracketing. You can adjust the overall exposure level for the bracketed images by rotating the quick control dial. Shifting the bracketing set toward the minus side of the graph will make the images darker, and shifting the bracketing set to the plus side of the graph will make the images brighter. You can select the bracketing increment, or the amount of variation you'd like between the shots, by rotating the main dial. You can choose a very small bracketing increment, or if you'd like to see more variation between your shots, you can choose a larger increment. Press Set to confirm your selection. The larger the number, the more variation in exposure there will be. If you select a smaller increment, like 0.3, the images will have less variation. Now, all we need to do is take a few pictures. As always, we'll press the shutter button halfway to focus and the rest of the way to take the picture. Since we're in a continuous drive mode, we'll hold the shutter button down to record the bracketed images. The first shot will have the standard exposure setting. 
the next one will be underexposed, and the last one will be overexposed. Just like we can bracket the exposure, we can also bracket the white balance. Doing this will allow us greater control over the color of images, particularly in tricky lighting situations. We'll have best results if an appropriate white balance setting has been selected or if a custom white balance has been taken. To bracket white balance, enter the camera's menu system and navigate to the second shooting menu. Here, select white balance shift bracket. You can also use the multi-controller to shift the bracketing set to any location on the graph, and you can rotate the quick control dial to select the color and level of variation you'd like the camera to use for the bracketed shots. If you rotate the quick control dial to the left, the green and magenta will be bracketed. And if you rotate the quick control dial to the right, the blue and amber colors will be bracketed. In the bracket box on the right side of the screen, you can see the level of bracketing that will be applied. Choosing one will give the images a small amount of variation, and choosing three will give the images a greater amount of variation. When white balance is bracketed, only one picture needs to be taken, and the camera will automatically generate the bracketed copies of the image. As discussed, you can choose to have either the green magenta tones bracketed, or you can choose to have the blue amber tones bracketed. If you select the green magenta tones, the first shot will have the standard setting, the second shot will have increased magenta tones, and the last shot will have increased green tones. If you choose to have the blue amber tones bracketed, the first shot will have the standard white balance setting, the second shot will have increased blue tones, and the last shot will have increased amber tones. The 7D Mark II has a feature for creating multiple exposures as well as a feature for HDR and interval timer photography. These features are great for creative and artistic shots. First, we'll discuss the multiple exposure function on your camera. In film and digital photography alike, a multiple exposure image is created when the film or image sensor is exposed two or more times to two or more different images. The final image has the additional image or images superimposed over the first. This photography technique is useful for creating artistic effect and is most commonly used when photographing fireworks, lightning, or superimposing a bright moon in a daytime scene. Let's walk through how to set up your 7D Mark II to shoot a multiple exposure image. Press the Creative Photo button, select Multiple Exposure, and press Set. For the first setting, you can choose Disable, On Function and Control Priority, or On Continuous Shooting Priority. Choose On Function Control Priority when you'd like to check your results as you take the multiple exposure images. Choose On Continuous Shooting Priority when you're capturing a multiple exposure image of a moving subject and you'd like to capture images continuously. The next option, Multiple Exposure Control, is where you can choose how you'd like the camera to calculate the exposure for each of the shots. If you select Additive, the exposure of each individual image will be added cumulatively. This is a good option to select if you're using a technique called masking, where one part of the lens is covered for the first shot and the opposite part of the lens is covered for the second shot. If you're not using the masking technique with the additive setting, you'll want to set a negative exposure compensation to ensure a properly exposed final image. The average option will automatically set the exposure values between the shots to ensure a properly exposed final image. The last two options, bright and dark, will have the camera add and compare the brightness or darkness of the base image, and only the bright or dark area will be left in the final image. The next option that we'll need to select is the number of exposures. With the 7D Mark II, you can choose from between two and nine exposures to be combined to make the final image. 
The next option, Save Source Images, will allow you to choose whether you'd like the camera to save each of the shots used to create the multiple exposure or the final image only. The next setting in the multiple exposure menu is Continue Multiple Exposure. With this setting, you can choose to take just one multiple exposure image and then return to normal shooting, or you can choose to shoot multiple exposure images continuously until multiple exposure shooting is canceled by selecting Disable for the first option in the multiple exposure menu. Below multiple exposure settings, there is an option to select image for multiple exposure. This is the option that you would use to select your base image if you were using the masking technique. After you have made your selection in the multiple exposure menu, simply take the number of shots that you have selected for the number of exposures, and the camera will combine them to create the final multiple exposure image. Another useful feature on the 7D Mark II is the HDR mode, which will allow you to create stunning HDR images directly in camera. HDR stands for High Dynamic Range. It's a technique that is used in photography to create captivating photos of dramatically lit subjects. The HDR effect is created when three differently exposed images are combined to create a single photo that shows a super realistic range of shadows and highlights. To capture an HDR photo, press the Creative Photo button, select HDR mode, and press Set to view the options. First, there is the Adjust Dynamic Range setting, which will determine the level of variation in exposure between the shots that will be combined to make the final image. You can choose Auto, 1, 2, or 3 exposure steps. Choosing one will combine three images with slight variation in exposure, and choosing three will combine images with more dramatic differences in exposure. Next, there is the effect setting. You can choose from natural, art standard, art vivid, art bold, and art embossed. The natural setting will preserve a wide range of tones that would otherwise be lost. Art standard will preserve more detail than natural, but the image will also have less contrast and appear flatter. Subjects in images taken with Art Standard will have outlines around their edges. The Art Vivid setting will create an HDR image with more saturated colors than the Art Standard setting and will create a graphic effect. The Art Bold setting will create an image that is more saturated and will make the subject pop with the look of an oil painting. The last setting, Art Embossed, will capture an image with low saturation and contrast. Overall, the image will appear flat and old, but with bright or dark outlines at the subject's edges. The next setting is Continuous HDR. You can choose to have only one shot be HDR, or you can choose to have every shot be HDR. Next, there is Auto Image Align. When enabled, this setting will automatically align the three images that will be combined to create the final HDR image. If you're using a tripod, you'll want to disable this. If you're hand-holding the camera, you'll want to choose Enable. The last option to adjust is Save Source Images. If you select All Images, the camera will save all of the photos that were used to create the HDR image as separate files. If you select HDR image only, the camera will only save the final HDR image to the memory card. When you're finished making your selections, simply take the picture as you normally would. The camera will take three shots at high speed and combine them to create the HDR image. Another feature of the 7D Mark II is the interval timer. With this feature, you can set the camera to take photos at preset intervals, which can be minutes or hours. Photographers use this feature for documentary, scientific work, as well as artistic and creative purposes. The interval timer could be used for photographing anything from runners in a race to dramatic sunrise sunsets to creative self-portraits in studio. You'll probably get the best results using this function if the camera is on a tripod. 
To use this function on your camera, first make sure that the date and time have been accurately set on your camera. Then enter the fourth shooting menu and select Interval Timer and Enable. Press the Info button to make adjustments to the interval timer settings. You can enter the interval or the length of time between shots in hours, minutes, and seconds. Use the multi-controller to select the setting that you'd like to adjust and press the multi-controller or the set button to access that setting. When you're finished making your selection, press the multi-controller or the set button again to confirm. If you're anticipating slow shutter speeds, you'll want to make sure that you choose an interval or time that is longer than the slowest shutter speed that you expect the camera to use. Next, you'll need to choose the number of shots that you'd like the camera to take at each interval. Now you're ready to have the camera start taking pictures. Simply select OK and press the shutter button to begin interval timer shooting. To end interval timer shooting, simply power the camera off. In addition to capturing impressive high-resolution still images, the 7D Mark II can record full HD movies. Note that because the basic features of the camera's movie mode were covered in detail in QuickPro's original guide for the 7D Mark II, we'll primarily be looking at more in-depth features and functions of the movie mode. Let's first take a look at the options that are available in the movie shooting menus. To view the movie shooting menus, first make sure that the Live View Movie Shooting switch is set to Movie. Then press the Menu button and scroll to the fourth shooting menu. The first option is Movie Servo AF. When enabled, Movie Servo AF will continually focus during movie mode. Next, there is AF Method with options for Face Tracking, FlexiZone Multi, and FlexiZone Single. Next, there is Grid Display, where you can choose one of three different framing grids to be displayed on the LCD to assist with composition. First, there is the 3x3 grid. This option will display a rule of third style grid on the live view and movie shooting screen. There is also a 6x4 grid. The 6x4 grid is especially helpful when you want to make sure that the image is not tilted. The last grid option is 3x3 plus diagonal. You can create striking compositions with this grid option when you place the subject at any intersection of the lines. Next, there is Movie Recording Quality, where you can choose the movie file type, resolution, frame rate, and compression method. The next option is Sound Recording. Here you can select Auto, Manual, or Disable. If you select Manual, you can adjust the recording level to suit your needs. You can also choose whether or not you'd like the wind filter or attenuator to be enabled. If you're shooting movies outdoors in windy conditions, enabling the filter will reduce noise caused by wind. If there is no wind or you're shooting indoors, you'll want to disable the filter as the sound will be more natural than it would be if the filter were enabled. When enabled, the attenuator will allow you to cut back the audio gain. If you're shooting at a concert, for example, and the audio levels are clipping, you can enable and adjust the attenuator to bring the audio to an acceptable range. Movie Servo AF Speed is next, where you can make adjustments to the Movie Servo AF settings. You can choose whether you'd like the Movie Servo AF to be active all the time or only when recording and you can choose how fast the camera will continually focus. Next, there is Movie Servo AF Tracking Sensitivity. You can choose to have the AF Tracking Sensitivity's priority be to lock the focus on the subject, or you can choose to have the Tracking Sensitivity be more responsive. The next shooting menu begins with Silent Live View Shooting, with two modes to choose from. In Mode 1, shooting is quieter than in normal live view. In Mode 2, you can press and hold the shutter button after the photo has been taken to further minimize sound. When you release the shutter button to halfway position, normal picture taking will resume. The next item is Metering Timer, 
With this option, you can change how long the exposure setting, or auto exposure lock time, is displayed. Next, there is time code, which will allow you to choose the way that you would like the time code recorded with the movie file. We'll discuss more about time code later in this chapter. The next option is silent control, which will allow you to keep camera sounds to a minimum when you're movie recording. When enabled, silent control will allow the top, bottom, and sides of the quick control dial to act as silent buttons during movie recording. Next, there is shutter button function in movie mode with four options. First, there is autofocus, metering, and still image capture. Next, there is metering and still image capture. The third option is autofocus, metering, and start-stop movie recording, and the final option is metering and start-stop movie recording. The final menu item is HDMI output plus LCD, which is for use when the camera is connected to an HD television. When mirroring is selected, the camera's LCD and TV will show the same display. When no mirroring is selected, the camera's LCD will be turned off. Now let's take a moment to discuss movie recording size. Just as with still shooting, it's important to select the resolution or movie recording size for your scenario. With the 7D Mark II, there are three different movie resolution options, each with several different frame rate and compression options. Let's discuss the movie recording size options now. To access the camera's movie recording settings, first make sure the Live View Movie switch is set to Movie, then enter the camera's menu system and navigate to the fourth shooting tab. Here, select the Movie Recording Quality option and Movie Recording Size. There is a variety of information shown at the top of this screen to indicate the settings for the selected option. Here, you'll see the resolution, the frame rate, the recording time remaining, the file type the movies will be saved as, and this setting is the compression method. There are five options for the 1920 by 1080 resolution. These settings will allow you to capture full HD video. The next two options are for the 1280 by 720 resolution. These are good options when you want to have high quality video, but it doesn't need to be full HD. The 1280 by 720 recording size could be used for family home movies or for similar scenarios. The bottom option on the right side of the screen is 640 by 480. This is a lower resolution setting that is good for when you know you only want to use the movie for emailing or posting online. In addition to the movie resolution, the movie frame rate will impact the movie quality. Choosing 24 frames per second will closely imitate the look that you would get if you were using a film video camera. 30 frames per second is more like what you would see on television. 60 frames per second is good for recording fast action video. You'll also notice that there are two different compression options on the 7D Mark II, IPB and All I. The IPB compression method will compress multiple frames at once for more efficient recording in smaller file sizes. The All I method will compress the frames one at a time for a movie file that is more suited for editing, but will also be a larger file. The purpose or use of the finished video will help you decide which recording size, frame rate, and compression method to use. Keep in mind that the higher the resolution, the larger the file sizes will be. As discussed earlier, when you're shooting movies, you can customize the way that you'd like to have the time code recorded. The time code is the way that a time reference is recorded with the movie and it's used to synchronize the video and audio. The way that the time code is recorded can be customized for your needs. Make sure that the Live View Movie switch is set to Movie and enter the camera's menu system. Navigate to the fifth shooting menu and select Time Code. Here you'll see that there are several different menu items to customize. First, there is Count Up. For Count Up, you can choose from Record Run or Free Run. If Record Run is selected, the time code will only count up while you're actually shooting a movie. If Free Run is selected, the time code will count up regardless of whether or not you're shooting. 
The next option in the time code menu is start time setting. For this option, you can choose from manual input setting, reset, or set to camera time. If you select manual input setting, you'll be able to set the hour, minute, and second freely. If you select reset, the time for both manual input setting and set to camera time will be reset. And if you select set to camera time, the hours, minutes, and seconds will be set to match the camera's internal clock. The next two menu items in the time code menu are movie recording count and movie playback count. For both of these options, you can choose to have either the recording time or the time code displayed on the LCD monitor. If recording time is selected, the time that has elapsed since the beginning of the movie recording or playback will be displayed. If time code is selected, the time code will be displayed. The next option is HDMI, which will allow you to select options for time code and record command. If you'd like to have the time code displayed on an external monitor, select on for time code. If you'd like to synchronize the camera's time code with an external recording device, select on for record command. The last menu item in the time code menu is drop frame. When enabled, the drop frame option will automatically correct the discrepancy in the time code that is caused when certain frame rates are used. With Canon's wide array of lenses and accessories, you'll be able to take amazing photos and further build your photography skills. Please note that using some third-party accessories, particularly flash units and multi-power packs, may cause damage to your camera and may void your Canon warranty. You'll want to check with your authorized Canon dealer or service representative for more information about the use of third-party accessories. With the wide variety of lenses in Canon's current lineup, it can seem overwhelming to know what lens or lenses will help you with the type of photography you're doing. Some Canon lenses are referred to as L-series lenses. These lenses are known for their stunning clarity and performance. These lenses are differentiated from other lenses with a bold red ring around the barrel. Let's talk a little about lenses and apertures. When shopping for a lens, you'll notice that all lenses have a maximum aperture or f-stop. Smaller numbers like f1.4 and f2.8 are considered to be faster lenses because they allow a lot of light into the camera. If your lens has a range of apertures, note that the largest aperture can only be used at the widest focal length. This lens is an f3.5 to 5.6 lens, and this is how the aperture or aperture range is indicated on the front of the lens barrel. The number or numbers following the one colon indicate the aperture or aperture range. The maximum aperture of the lens is important to keep in mind when you're shopping for a lens, especially if you're planning on doing photography in low light conditions, action or sports photography, or if you're looking to create photos with a very shallow depth of field. After the maximum aperture of the lens, the next thing that you'll need to consider is the focal length. Canon lenses are available in a wide range of focal lengths, each with its own benefits and uses. The focal length on a lens is the first series of numbers on the front of the lens barrel, and it's measured in millimeters. This lens, for instance, is an 18 to 135 millimeter lens or the focal lengths range from 18 millimeters to 135 millimeters. Lenses that have a range of focal lengths, like this 18 to 135 millimeter, are zoom lenses. Zoom lenses have the ability to get closer or farther away from the subject without ever actually moving the camera. Lenses that have only one focal length, like a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens, are prime lenses. Prime lenses do not have zooming capability but many professional photographers prefer them, particularly for portraits because of the great clarity they offer. With this understanding of focal lengths in millimeters, we can discuss some of the different ranges of focal lengths as well as the lens categories that different focal lengths fall into. 
Typically, lenses that are less than 50 millimeters are considered to be wide angle lenses. So the 18 to 135 that we talked about could fall into the wide angle range because it goes down to 18 millimeters. Wide angle lenses are great for landscape shots as well as situations where space is limited and you want to include as much of the scene as possible. Mid-range lenses or normal lenses typically have between 50 and 85 millimeters. This range of focal lengths is great for family snapshots, portraits, and vacations. The 18 to 135 lens also falls into the mid-range category. These lenses are also referred to as walk-around lenses because they're so versatile and can be used for a variety of subjects and shooting scenarios. Telephoto lenses are lenses with over 85 millimeters and are great for getting closer to your subject. Sports and wildlife photographers use telephoto lenses extensively to zoom in on the subject. Telephoto lenses are also great for getting amazing close-up shots of flowers or other small objects. If you're photographing very small objects and you want to have the ability to capture even the smallest details, you want to look into a dedicated close-up or micro lens. The focal lengths for dedicated close-up lenses range between about 60 millimeters and 200 millimeters. In addition to apertures and focal lengths, there is one more important feature that you should consider when you're shopping for a Canon lens. Image stabilization, or IS. Image stabilization will help you get sharp photos at slower shutter speeds. This feature is especially useful in low light conditions and can make the difference between a photo like this and a photo like this. Your 7D Mark II has many fully customizable settings and options. As we've discussed in chapters 1 and 4, you can customize the camera's buttons and dials, but you can also customize a wide variety of other camera functions to fit your personal preference. Let's take a look at some of these settings now. Let's first take a look at some of the customizable functions in the camera's AF menus. In the fourth AF menu, there are several customizable features for the camera's AF system. The first thing that we'll look at is the selectable AF point. With this menu item, you can choose how many of the camera's 65 AF points you'd like to be able to use for autofocusing. You can choose to enable all 65, 21, or 9 of the AF points. The next menu item in the fourth AF menu is Select AF Area Selection Mode. With this menu item, you can choose which AF area selection modes you'd like to enable. Depending on your preferences, you may want to select just a few of the options or all seven. The next menu item that will allow you to customize the camera's autofocus functions is AF Area Selection Method. With this option, you can choose whether you'd like to use the AF Area Selection Level and Multifunction button or AF Area Selection Level and Main Dial to select the AF Area Selection mode after the AF Area Selection button is pressed. The next menu item is Orientation Linked AF Point with two options. For the first option, same for both vertical and horizontal, the camera will use the same AF area selection mode and AF point regardless of the camera's horizontal or vertical orientation. For separate AF points, area plus point, you can select a different AF area selection mode and AF point for the camera's horizontal and both vertical orientations. For separate AF point points only, you can select a different AF point for the horizontal and vertical orientations. Initial AF point auto selection is next. With this menu item, you can choose the starting AF point for the camera to use for autofocus. If you choose initial auto AF point selected, you'll manually select the AF point. If you choose manual selection, the AF point that was selected before the AF area selection mode was changed will be used. And if you choose Auto, the camera will automatically choose the initial AF point. The next option is Auto AF Point Selection EOS ITR AF. 
When enabled, this setting will autofocus by recognizing faces and subject colors. Now let's take a look at a few of the menu items in the fifth AF menu. First, we'll discuss the top option, Manual AF Point Selection Pattern. With this option, you can choose how you'd like to be able to scroll through the AF points in the viewfinder. The first option is Stops at AF Area Edges, meaning that when you're scrolling and reach the top, bottom, left, or right side, you won't be able to continue scrolling in that direction. With the Continuous option, you can continue scrolling when you reach an edge. The AF point on the opposite edge, top, bottom, left, or right, will be selected when you continue to scroll. The last customizable AF setting that we'll discuss is AF point display during focus. The first option is selected constant. With this option, the selected AF point or points will always be displayed in the viewfinder. The next option, all constant, will always display all of the camera's 65 AF points. The next option, selected pre-AF focused, will display the selected AF points during selection, before you press the AF on or shutter button, and after focus has been achieved. The next option, selected focus, will display the selected focus points during selection and when focus has been achieved. The last option, Disable Display, will show the AF points only while they're being selected. Now let's take a look at a few of the items in the Setup menu that will allow you to customize several camera functions. First, we'll take a look at the top menu item in the first Setup menu, Record Function Card Folder Selection. With this option, you can choose the method that you'd like the camera to use to record and store images on memory cards. Let's first look at the Record Play option, where you can choose which card you'd like to use for image recording and playback. If you select Card 1, images will be recorded to and played back from the CF card. If you select Card 2, images will be recorded to and played back from the SD memory card. Now let's look at the top option, Record Function, with four different options. If you select Standard, images will be recorded according to the selection that you made for the Record Play setting. If you select Auto Switch Card, the camera will record images using the card that you selected for Record Play, but when the card becomes full, the camera will automatically switch to the other card. If Record Separately is selected, You'll be able to set the image recording quality for each card independently. If the last option, Record to Multiple, is selected, the camera will record each image to both memory cards. The last option in the Record Function Card Folder Selection menu is Folder. With this option, you can create additional folders on the memory card for images to be recorded to. This could be useful if you're shooting multiple events or locations in one day and you'd like to have images from each event stored in separate folders. To create a new folder, press Set, select Create Folder, and select OK. Now you can choose the folder where you'd like to have images saved on the memory card. Another useful feature on the 7D Mark II is copyright information, where you can enter your own copyright information to be saved in the metadata for each image that is recorded. To enter your own copyright information, navigate to the fourth setup menu and select Copyright Information. Here you can select Enter Author's Name, press the Quick Control button to select the input area, and use the main dial, quick control dial, multi-controller, and set button to enter characters. To backspace, press the erase button. When you're finished, press the menu button. You can also enter information into copyright details in the same way. Now let's take a look at the 7D Mark II's custom functions menu. The first two menu items in the first menu are Exposure Level and ISO Speed Increments, where you can choose either one-third or one-half stop increments for the exposure level and ISO speed. Next, there is Bracketing Auto Cancel, 
which will allow you to choose whether to have the bracketing settings canceled automatically when the camera is powered off. Under bracketing sequence, you can set the order for bracketed images to be taken. Number of bracketed shots allows you to shoot three, two, five, or seven shots when using exposure or white balance bracketing. The safety shift menu item allows you to set the camera to automatically change the exposure settings in certain shooting modes when the image is going to be very overexposed. The next menu item is same exposure for new aperture, which will allow you to choose how you'd like the camera to compensate for a shift in aperture settings when a different lens, lens extender, or a zoom lens is attached to the camera. The second custom functions menu begins with set shutter speed range, where you can simply choose the range of shutter speeds that you'd like to be able to use. You can set the highest and lowest shutter speeds. Set aperture range is next, where you can choose the range of aperture settings that you'd like to be able to use. You can choose the minimum and maximum aperture settings. Continuous shooting speed is next, where you can choose the number of shots you'd like the camera to record per second in the continuous high speed, continuous low speed, and silent continuous drive modes. The third custom functions menu begins with focusing screen, which will allow you to set up a camera to use an optional focusing screen. Next, there is warnings in viewfinder which will allow you to choose which items you'd like the camera to warn you about in the viewfinder. Next, there is live view shooting area display. This option allows you to choose whether you'd like live view display to be masked or outlined when shooting at different aspect ratios. The next menu item, dial direction during shutter aperture priority, allows you to set the direction for the main dial when setting the shutter speed and aperture. Next, there is multi-function lock setting, where you can choose which controls to lock when the lock switch is set to lock. The next menu item is custom controls, where you can customize the functions of many of the camera's buttons and dials. The fourth custom functions menu begins with add cropping information. This will allow you to set the camera to display vertical lines for the aspect ratio you select. The default erase option menu item will allow you to select whether cancel or erase is selected by default when you press the erase button in playback mode. The final custom functions menu has only one menu item, clear all custom functions. This will allow you to set all of the custom functions back to factory default. The Canon 7D Mark II has a built-in GPS feature that makes it even more versatile in the way that it can capture and share images. Using the GPS will allow you to quickly sort images by location when you're post-processing, as well as record a variety of other information about the location where the photo was taken. There are a few things that you should know about the camera's GPS feature before you begin using it. First, the GPS will only work when the camera is outdoors and away from tall buildings. You should also avoid placing your hand or other objects on top of the camera. Next, the GPS feature may take up to several minutes to obtain the information about the current location. Let's take a quick look at the camera's GPS function now. First, we'll need to enter the camera's second setup menu and select GPS Digital Compass Settings. Here, choose GPS and Enable. Now, watch the LCD panel or LCD monitor for the GPS icon. When the GPS icon is blinking, the GPS signal has not been acquired. When the GPS icon is constant, the GPS signal has been acquired. You can use the camera's GPS feature to record the camera's location in the image metadata to automatically set the time for the camera's internal clock and even to log the route that you have traveled. The GPS information can be accessed in the camera's menu system. Again, under the camera's second setup menu, select GPS. Here, select Setup. 
For auto time setting, you can choose from three different options. Choose auto update if you'd like the camera to automatically set the time when it's powered on and a GPS signal is acquired. Choose disable to turn off the auto time setting and choose set now to manually set the time setting. Under position update interval, you can choose how frequently you would like the camera to update its position. You can choose from options ranging from every second to every five minutes. When enabled, the digital compass will allow you to add the direction the camera is facing to the GPS data for the image. You can select GPS information display to view the GPS information about your current location. Calibrate digital compass will simply allow you to calibrate the digital compass. Another useful feature in the GPS digital compass menu is GPS logger. When enabled, you can use this feature in conjunction with the map utility software to view the recorded route of travel and the images that were taken during travel will be geotagged. Your Canon 7D Mark II is a sophisticated camera and will need some basic care and maintenance to keep it in good working condition. Here are some tips for storing your camera. First, when the camera will be stored for long periods of time, remove the battery and use the battery cover. Next, make sure that the storage location is cool and dry and does not get exposed to temperatures above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Avoid storing the camera in areas with high humidity, near televisions, radios, or other equipment that produces strong electromagnetic fields. When you're using the camera regularly, you want to protect it from several environmental elements that could cause damage. The camera should stay dry and contact with dust and sand should be avoided. You'll also want to avoid subjecting the camera to sudden changes in temperature. If the camera is cold and it's suddenly brought into a warm environment, condensation or moisture can build up on the camera's internal components. Also, leaving the lens pointed at the sun will damage the camera's image sensor. Finally, make sure that the camera is turned off before you remove the battery, memory card, change lenses, or attach any accessory to the accessory shoe. You'll want to consult your owner's manual for a complete list of care techniques and cautions. Let's talk a little now about ways to properly clean your camera without causing damage. To remove dust or lint from the camera body, a blower or a brush is a good tool to have on hand. With either of these tools, you can also clean the lens, viewfinder, and mirror. To further clean the camera body, you can use a soft, dry cloth. Do not use alcohol or any other harsh chemicals. If the camera has been used at a beach, you can dampen a cloth with distilled water to clean the camera body. After the blower tool has been used to remove any dust and lint, you can use a soft cloth with a small amount of lens cleaner to gently clean the lens, monitor, and viewfinder. When you're using lens cleaning fluid, be sure to apply the fluid to the cloth and not to the camera or lens directly. Your 7D Mark II can be set to automatically clean the image sensor each time the camera is turned on or off. To do this, enter the camera's third setup menu and select Sensor Cleaning. You can choose Auto Cleaning, Clean Now, or Clean Manually. If Auto Cleaning is enabled, the camera will automatically clean the image sensor when the camera is powered on or off. You can select Clean Now anytime that you would like to clean the sensor automatically. And if you select clean manually, the camera's mirror will lock up to enable you to manually clean the sensor. Step-by-step -step instructions are available in your camera's owner's manual. When cleaning the image sensor, great care should be taken as damage to the image sensor can easily occur. QuickPro suggests that you contact a Canon authorized service representative for assistance in cleaning the image sensor or other internal camera components. We hope you've enjoyed learning more about your Canon 7D Mark II. We know this new information will give you enough confidence and know-how to take your photography skills to new levels. Remember, you can refer back to any section of this guide at any time. Watch for more QuickPro guides on using newly released cameras. Thanks for watching.